Concrete is the most consumed human-made material on the planet. It is also a major contributor to global warming. So, can we make the building blocks of our society sustainable? Let's find out. Let's start with the basics. What is concrete and why do we need it? Concrete is a strong, versatile, long-lasting building material that has become a key element for urbanization. We use concrete in buildings, bridges, tunnels, nuclear power plants, driveways, dams, sidewalks, harbors… I think you get the point. Worldwide demand for concrete is huge. It's actually second only to water. Unfortunately, concrete production is responsible for a whopping 8% of global CO2 emissions. Why does making concrete generate so much greenhouse gas, you ask? Well, it mostly comes down to what it's made of. Concrete contains three main components. The major component is the aggregate, which is a mixture of sand, crushed stone, and gravel. Next comes a paste made out of water and cement, which acts like the glue. And lastly, air. Let's focus on the cement glue for a second. Cement is made from gypsum, a soft mineral found in the Earth's crust, and clinker, a lumpy solid that is formed when calcium carbonate and other oxides are heated in a kiln. Clinker is produced through a chemical reaction called limestone calcination, whereby calcium carbonate, CaCO3, commonly known as limestone, is broken down into calcium oxide, CaO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Overall, the limestone calcination process is responsible for about 50 to 70% of the direct carbon dioxide emissions from concrete manufacture. The rest mainly comes from fuel combustion, transportation, and mining. In fact, on average, approximately 0.81 kilograms of CO2 gets generated for every one kilogram of cement that's produced. And that's not all. Cement manufacturer also triggers illness, contributes to acid rain, and contaminates surrounding ecosystems. If you thought this couldn't get any worse, between now and 2040, worldwide demand for cement is actually expected to grow by 30% producing even more CO2 and significantly speeding up global climate change. So what can we do? Well, to honor the Paris Agreement and limit global temperature increases to 2 degrees Celsius, direct CO2 emissions from cement and concrete production need to be cut by a quarter before 2050. All right, that's fine. So how do we achieve this? Well, thankfully scientists and engineers have figured out several crafty ways to produce cement and concrete without releasing so much CO2. First off, we can improve energy efficiency. Higher energy efficiency during cement manufacturing can reduce CO2 emissions by up to 8%. This could include the recovery of excess heat or the use of more efficient cement grinders. However, these improvements often require considerable investment. Another option is to use alternative fuels to heat the kilns in which the clinker is produced. On a global average, 94% of fuels that are currently used are fossil fuels. Kilns can also be fed with biomass and waste materials instead of carbon-intensive fuels. These fossil fuel substitutes could prevent up to 40% of direct emissions from the cement industry. Another potential improvement could be the use of alternative clinker materials. That's because producing one ton of clinker releases around 0.7 tons of CO2. Instead of clinker, materials such as granulated blast furnace slag, fly ash, and limestone can be used. These have a lower carbon footprint, if any at all. In any case, the uptake of these innovations will depend on the availability of alternative materials and technologies, their costs, and the properties of the resulting cement. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is the use of carbon-negative cements. These have the potential to absorb and store more CO2 than is actually emitted during the manufacturing process. But how does this work? One of the many ways is to use a waste product from the steel industry known as steel slag instead of cement. This slag is ground up, mixed in with the other components of concrete, and then poured into molds shaped like bricks. The molds are then placed in an airtight chamber into which CO2 gas is slowly pumped. The CO2 gets absorbed by the slag concrete mix in a process called carbonation activation. Through this process, the CO2 is actually permanently stored inside of the concrete blocks, 
and it even enhances the block's strength and durability. As such, the concrete blocks effectively become carbon negative, since they trap more CO2 than is released by making them. Carbicrete is a Montreal-based company that is currently implementing this technology, but many others are also working to reduce the cement industry's impact on the climate. Concrete is everywhere, and it's currently a big contributor to worldwide CO2 emissions. Fortunately, as we've seen, the near horizon is bursting with promising decarbonization pathways and interesting innovations, such as improvements to the manufacturing process, alternative sources of energy and raw materials, and changes to even the composition of concrete itself. The future is clear. The concrete and cement industry can and must be transformed to meet future global climate goals. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Till next time.